Good morning, Lehmanite Town. Welcome to God's house in the back mountains of Northeast Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Lauren. I'm glad to see all of those who came out on this beautiful winter's day. Glad to see those who have joined us online. And we'll know in about an hour about those people who forgot to change their clocks this weekend. <laughs> I can see who has and who has not. Does anybody have any announcements this morning? No hands shooting up. Okay. Yes, Linda. Step by step tomorrow night, weather cooperating. Okay. <laughs> At seven. It's it's our first time back since Christmas. So anyway, with a couple of personnel differences, but uh -huh. anyway. So yes. Step by Step Praise Band will be at Chambertown tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, weather permitting. Will there be an announcement or something there? Um, it, it would probably be on Shavertown's uh, website. Okay. And I'll, if I find out, I'll tell you and maybe we can pass the word. We can get the prayer team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right then. Other announcements? Jane. Pass the orders are due on Friday. Pass the orders are due to Jane by this Friday. We'll be making them next week then, Wednesday and Thursday. So mark your calendars. We can always use the extra help. Other. Jane. Well, the Penn State basketball team left this morning at about 2 a.m. to go to Virginia to play in nationals. Like we said last week, they're seated in first place for that. And the women in faith did give a donation to them to help defray their costs while they're there. And their first game is Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Okay, the Penn State Wilkes Barre men's basketball team has gone on to nationals. They're seated number one, you said? That's fantastic. So we'll keep them in prayer as they travel and for their games. Others? Well, the Penn State uh, University, they won last night. They're in the finals for their uh, Big Ten. I forget who they're playing tonight, but they beat Indiana last night. Okay. Penn State's playing. Is that who they're playing? I forget. No, I forget. Purdue. Purdue. They're playing oh, Purdue. Purdue. All right, and the Maine University's team has, are also playing in the finals. Judy. Soup and Scripture will be held this Wednesday here at Lehman I-Town, and we're going to meet about um, quarter to five, maybe 4.30, the setup for that. The meal starts at six, and then there's a lesson a little later on as part of that scripture. Others? Tuesday evening at 6.30, the worship team will meet here in the church basement. Please also, if you'll note on the insert in your bulletin and take note of our display up here, we've been trying to raise some funds to replace our sewage injection pump here at the church and trim some trees along the post office parking lot before any limbs come down and hurt people or hurt vehicles. As you can see, we have almost paid for the pump, but the collection is still ongoing. Others. I have one I'd like to read to you that we received this thank you card addressed to the church. LIUMC family, you will never know the depth of our appreciation to all who sent food, cards, calls, and texts, and visits during my recent illness and my mother's passing. It has been a difficult time, and your love and support helped to ease the hurt. Many thanks to you all from the entire major family. Love, Sabrina. And we'll try to get this on the bulletin board then. Let us take this time to prepare our hearts for worship.
I invite you to give your attention to Jane as she reads to us this morning our Lenten meditation. Good morning. There is now so much during the day that clamors for one our attention. Friends, family, work, closure, and the telephones, household tasks, and the noise. We are bombarded with sound from the clock that awakens us to the telephone, the radio, the television, the conversation we have or overheard. Where is there a place to listen for the still, small voice of God? Sometimes it seems that God would have to speak in a whirlwind to be heard above the clamor. Listen now. There is a place of quiet rest, and it is the place where God dwells within you. Close your eyes. Be aware of the place. In Lent, we journey to the parts of ourselves known only to God. Beneath the clamor, let the story of Jesus reach us there. Let it reach us wisdom in our hearts. Let's take a moment in silence. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of violence in the world. Let us pray as it is in your bulletin. Draw us together, together in your love, O God. God. May, May our restless hearts, hearts not resist you, but continue to search until they find their rest in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we sing Sweet, Sweet Spirit. And we'll sing it through twice. <laughs>
fire. Now normally we would have young disciples time, but I don't see too many young disciples here this morning. So we're going to move on to God moments. Where have you encountered God and do you have joys or concerns that you'd like to share this morning? Lee. The family of Kenneth Swan. The family of John Swan. Kenneth. Kenneth. Kenneth Swan. Kenneth Swan, sorry. <laughs> to be back in church again, and I thank everybody for their prayers. A joy to be here and to be able to breathe again. <laughs> I saw an up oh, Diane. Well, it's a joy for me to have my roommate's brother. Michael. Michael's here. <laughs> and he came to church with me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joy to have Michael and Mary both here with us this morning. Welcome. Others. Yes, Kelly. Um, prayers for a young girl named um, Reagan Flick. She has uh, a medical. A problem. young girl named Reagan. Reagan Flick. Yes. Reagan Flick. Okay. Kim. Um, it's both a joy and a concern. Um, person I know named Joe is going into rehab. Okay. For Joe, who is going into rehab, it's good that he's going, and we'll pray that he stays and gets the help he needs. Others? Jeannie? Uh, my friend that is with problems continues, so I'd like continued prayers. Chester with the speech problem? No. My friend. My friend. Your friend. Has the speech problem, still persisting, getting therapy, but it's going to be a long time. Okay. Jeannie's friend with the speech there. Others. Oh, Bob. I would just like to thank uh, everyone for their prayers and cards and donations um, and to take to help take care of Robbie. He's still in John Pines. He will be there as long as they can keep him there. They keep extending his time because he's making progress. Um, so thank you so much for all your help and prayers. And um, we still need them. A big thank you for all of your help and prayers for Robbie as he continues to recover following his surgery. He is still at John Hines, and we hope he can stay there and continue to get the help that he needs. Darwin. Uh, for Carl Kratz, it's my son Corey's wife's grandfather who's in the hospital. For Corey's grandfather-in-law yeah. who is in the hospital. And the grandfather-in-law is named Carl. <laughs> All right. Others. Let's keep those folks in California who have been snowed in under feet of snow. We only have inches. And now they're also dealing with flooding as yet another storm system comes through. Um, we're thankful and grateful for sharks and for the role that they play out in the oceans and in our cycle of life, the aquatic animals, others. Let's unite our hearts in prayer this morning. Holy and gracious God, blessed are we created in your image. Oh Lord, you have given us so much that our hearts overflow, or should overflow, with gratitude. Family, friends, people who care about us. A Savior who loves us no matter what. Oh, Lord God, thank you for the gift of this new day and all of the promise and potential it holds. We ask, Lord, that you would open our eyes to your hand at work in the world around us, that you would open our ears to hear your still, small voice, whether it's in the song of the birds and the whispering of the tree branches, 
whether it's in the crunch of the ice underfoot. Lord our God, open our hearts to receive the gift of love everlasting, the gift of love that is unconditional, that comes only from you. We ask, Lord, this day, that as we have lifted up these moments that have brought smiles to our faces, joy to our hearts, we lift up to you this day, O oh Lord, these moments that have brought us to our knees, weeping, just weighed down. And we are grateful, God, that in the midst of each and every one of these moments, you are present. You are walking along beside us, carrying us when necessary. That you are dancing and laughing with us. And we ask, Lord, in the midst of these times that you would hear us, hear the cries of our hearts, O oh God, as we speak to you now, heart to heart in silence. hear our prayers where there is sickness reach down with your healing touch restoring body mind spirit where there is grief Lord pour out your comfort filling hearts with your peace that passes all understanding and Lord for those who are weighed down with burdens and struggles too much to bear lift us up Carry us through those times with your strength, with your beacon of hope, with your undying love. And Lord our God, we ask that you would pour out your wisdom upon the peoples and leaders of this world, our nations, our churches, our communities, that they would follow your guidance your leading, your Holy Spirit. We ask this and pray it in the name of Christ who taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to give your attention to Amy as she reads. Do you want to do the hymn of preparation? The hymn of preparation. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I slip something in there and forget it myself. <laughs> I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we sing O Love How Deep, number 267, verses 1 through 4, and verse 6.
seated and now give your attention to Amy as she reads to us the scriptures this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our epistle lesson is from 1 John 3, 11, verses 11, 16 to 18. Love one another. This is the message we have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. It is by, we know what real love is because Christ gave up his life for us. And so we also ought to give up our lives for our Christian brothers and sisters. But if anyone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need and refuses to help, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let us stop just saying we love each other. Let us really show it by our actions. And our gospel lesson is John 19. 25b to 27. <clears throat> Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Woman, is he your son? And she said to the disciple, She is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Please rise and body your spirit as we join in singing the glory of God. from getting through. Remove any barriers, Lord, that would seek and try to prevent your message of love from being spoken, heard, understood, and lived out in our daily, day-to-day -day life. We ask this in the powerful and mighty name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Today we're beginning our work, the third word from Jesus speaking from the cross in our series of his seven final sayings. And this is the one where Jesus commends his mother, basically hands her over to the disciple whom he loves. And to the disciple whom he loves, he says, this is now your mother. With that, have you ever pictured what that would look like? We've all seen the great pictures and paintings of the Last Supper where the disciples are close around Jesus with one or two of them even leaning in under his arm, leaning on his chest. I imagine his mother Mary at different times drew her son, her firstborn, into her arms and held him. And as he grew older into a man and 
those hugs, it would be more a case where she would be leaning with her ear pressed against his chest. And there's a quote from a monk of Patmos, the island where John had been exiled to, where John wrote what we know as Revelation from. And this monk of Patmos said, those who lean on Jesus' breast hear God's heartbeat. Those who lean on Jesus' breast hear God's heartbeat. What an image, what a beautiful image that brings to mind. Woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. In agony, Jesus speaks these words from the cross. Even dying, Jesus is more concerned about others than he is about himself. He raises himself up from that little piece of wood, that little seat on the cross that was supporting him, gasping for air, each breath excruciating, painful, he needs to get the words out. He needs to ensure that his mother is cared for after he is gone. This woman is the same girl who conceived by the Holy Spirit, who rejoiced along with her cousin Elizabeth saying, my soul magnifies the Lord. The mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and <coughs> lifted up and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. From the Magnificat, as told in Luke chapter 1, this woman is the same girl who traveled on a donkey to Bethlehem to give birth, who heard Simeon prophesy that her boy child was destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too, from Luke chapter 2. It's the same woman who then fled with that baby to the land of Egypt. This woman is the mother who raised a boy, worrying herself sick when he went missing in Jerusalem. The woman who followed him throughout his ministry and travels, who was rebuked for asking her son to turn water into wine and was snubbed when she tried to see him again. This woman, Mary, endured much joy and heartache through the birth, life, and now death of her firstborn staying close to the son whom she dearly loved, even as he is drawing his last breath. The last words that anybody breathes are significant, meaningful. Oftentimes they're words of love and remembrance for those who are left behind to mourn. In Jesus's time, final words were as binding as a last will and testament are today. It's no wonder then that Mary, his mother, Mary Magdalene, and the disciple whom Jesus loved would be among those gathered at the foot of the cross, faithful even until Jesus' death. Jesus, who throughout his life put others before himself once again deliberately chose to put others first. 
A few weeks ago, we heard how he spoke on behalf of those who tortured him, who were crucifying him on behalf of us. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Then we heard Jesus reassure a criminal that today you will be with me in paradise. And now, now he is watching out for his mother's welfare, making sure that she will be cared for after his death. In that day and age, widows and orphans, and we think that Mary must have been a widow because after Jesus went missing in Jerusalem when he was 12 years old, we hear nothing more about Joseph. So these widows and orphans were to be cared for by their families or those who were in charge of the temple or local synagogue. And one of the things that upset Jesus tremendously was the corruption, the abuse in the temples and synagogues where the poor, the orphan, the widow were being neglected and shortchanged, where the priests were living the high life while ignoring their duties to those they were supposed to care for. Besides, Jesus had made many enemies in the temple, and so he had no expectation that his mother, Mary, would receive help from there. Yes, Jesus had brothers and sisters. Scripture tells us that different times. But since the beginning of his ministry, he has set out redefining what a family was. Mark and Luke echo a story that can be found in Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50. While Jesus was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told Jesus, look, your mother and your brothers, they're standing outside wanting to speak to you. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, Who's my mother? Who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, Here, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. What a slap in the face that must have been to Mary and the rest of the family. How hurt they must have felt at all those being disowned. But it was actually love, plain and simple, that Jesus was trying to get across. To love one another as God first loved us. And turning to the disciple whom Jesus loved to care for his mother, whom Jesus also loved, he was once again redefining what a family looked like. We become members of the family of Christ when we accept that he is the Son of God. When we decide to drop everything and follow him. When you made that decision, at whatever point in your life you did that, you immediately became a member of a family that has roots that go back more than 2,000 years. A family that has laughed together, cried together, argued together. Just read Paul's letters to the churches of Galatia and Corinthians to understand that one. But ultimately... They have worshipped God, and they have loved one another. Look around you. Really, look around you at everybody seated here today. And those of you joining us on Zoom, look at those who are in the room with you. Or take a look at the sanctuary as you spin around here. The family that you have been adopted into is sitting with you. 
Our family becomes the family of Christians anywhere and everywhere. In seminary, one of the thing, classes I took was an immersion class where I spent two weeks at a truck stop ministry in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And the man in charge of that was from the Church of the Brethren. His name was Chaplain Dan. And there was joy from drivers and their traveling companions when they recognized Chaplain Dan and I as a brother and sister in Christ. When we were recognized as Christians, whether it was a sick Hispanic man from California, an African-American couple traveling together and studying the word so that they could share it with others, whether it was women in the denomination who wore bonnets and dresses but no jewelry, not even a plain wedding band, we were all united as the family of Christ. And the family of Christians is a group, a clan, a tribe, made up of people from all different backgrounds who have been adopted into the family of God through the love of Jesus Christ, plain and simple. At seminary, there was, we were told the story of a young woman who was very enthusiastic and bubbly and just excited to be at the church she had been appointed at. And she would go through the town, and as she met people, she'd invite them to come to worship at her church. One day, one of the upstanding members of her church saw her doing this. And after the person that the pastor had just invited walked away, the gentleman from the church walked up to her and said, Pastor, this is our church. We'll decide who can be here. Wow. How loving and hospitable was that? And you think that didn't take the wind out of that pastor's sails? Break her heart. Not a very welcoming or loving family, to be sure. Their actions were overt out in the open so that she could see them. But we can be unloving and unwelcoming through subtle actions as well. Gossip, looks, parking lot whispers. If we have somebody new and sits in a pew and you go up to them and say, excuse me, that's my pew. My family has sat there for five generations. You've got to move. I know that would never happen here. <laughs> Lent is a good time to reflect on our family relationships. Are there areas that need to be forgiven and then forgotten? Are there wrongs that need to be made right? Rifts that need to be mended? Maybe you've been hurt and wronged by someone else and you've been waiting for them to make the first move. Well, stop waiting. They may never do it. Worry instead about your own soul, your own relationship with God. Forgive the other person even if they haven't asked, because you're doing it for your sake. We don't know when the time of day will be when we will be called in front of that throne of judgment that God sits upon. But we do know that when our time is up, we want to be with Christ in paradise, surrounded by a love, plain and simple. What does a family do? It cares for one another, watches out for one another, sticks together through thick and thin. My brother's a few years younger than I am, and growing up, we would get into some scraps. Not just the mouth arguments and, Mom, he called me a name, or he's on my side of the car, but sometimes, sad to say, we had 
we put up our dukes and we got into fist fights. But let somebody from outside of our family pick on him or pick on me and we have each other's backs. We would be there. And still as grown-ups, we have our disagreements. We don't always see eye to eye, but we can still count on each other. A few years ago, my brother really wasn't speaking to me for one reason or another, and we, Brian and I were driving down the road and spotted an accident that had happened. The cars were pulled off to the side, and I realized that the one car that had been rear-ended was my brother's car. I pulled off to the side of the road and went to see, was there something that he needed? Was he okay? When I found out that he was fine and all he needed me to do was drop some food off at his house so it wouldn't get spoiled, I did that and went on my way. Just last year, the furnace at our house broke down, not the one in the parsonage, but our own home that we own, where our son was living, and as things happened, he was, had a cold at the time, plus it was during that bitter February cold snap. Our son called my brother, because he lived just a few blocks away, and my brother was there very quickly, seeing what he could do to help out to get the furnace going and when he couldn't get the furnace working he could bring some portable heaters so that our son wouldn't get cold and that the pipes wouldn't freeze when the chips are down we can count on each other and i'm sure we are all surrounded by examples of family sticking up for one another you each have your own stories but I'll leave you one with one more, the plain folk, the Amish, Mennonite, and some of their acts of love. Several years ago, there was a family in Perry County who lost seven of their eight children in a house fire. The only reason the one survived was they followed mom out to the barn as she went to go milking. In the rebuilding, they experienced all kinds of acts of love, not just from the plain folk community, but from other people who reached out as well, helping rebuild their home through fundraising, through an auction for medical funds. There are many ways that you can reach out and show love of family love of brother or sister, whether they are related to you by blood or by the blood of Christ. We do that here, collecting items in the shoe boxes, collecting items for Graniteville, for the B&B &B food pantry of Knoxon, through our blessing box outside that does get used through collections for Mission Central and UMCOR and Vacation Bible School, through people giving of their time and their talent, making a phone call, sending a card or a letter, spending some time visiting or listening or praying. I invite you, search your hearts, spend time with God and discern how God is calling you to show love as Mary was adopted into the family of the disciple whom Jesus loved so too have we been adopted into the family of Christ Paul reminds us of that in his letter to the Romans chapter 8 verses 15 through 17 where he writes for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 
And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. We have been adopted into the family of Christ. We have been adopted. We have been made heirs, heirs with Christ that assure us a home in paradise, all because of a love plain and simple. Let us pray. Loving God, we love because you first loved us. Show us ways that we can share your love with others. Let us love not just in word and speech, but in truth and action, so that you may be glorified in all we do. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God showed his love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, he gave his only son that we might live. I invite you to search your hearts and give as you are led by the Spirit this morning. Would the ushers please come forward? Thank you, Lord, for offering from the peoples who love you so much. And now we ask that this offering be used for the betterment of your kingdom on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bob. I invite you to join us in our closing hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excel, 384.
two more prayer requests before we go this morning. Keep travelers in your prayers this week. I know we have some folks that are going to be journeying around, some to the south. And continue to pray for the Ukraine. I had the privilege of speaking with um, a priest that's serving stateside here who has family serving in Ukraine. And you could hear the heartbreak in his voice as he talked about his family, his brothers who are over there. So please continue to keep the situation in Ukraine lifted up. And now as you go, go filled with the Holy Spirit, the love of Christ and the grace of God everlasting. Amen.